Hey all you lab rats and lovebirds. Welcome back to my channel, Lab Shenanigans, run by Darian Wynn of Lab Shenanigans of the Lab Shenanigans, because I'm Darian Wynn. Today, I want to talk about you and me. Today, I want to talk about chemistry, and I'm not talking about this chemistry. Nuclear reaction with a flux capacitor to a radioactive spider. Fuck you, science. I'm talking about this chemistry. He went, yo, that ass is fat. I was like, this ass? And he was like, that ass. It was beautiful. I mean, I'm talking about the stuff that makes me ho. <laughs> so pretty much when someone gives me a compliment because I kind of have low self-esteem. <laughs> I'm talking about love. Oh yeah, it's because of that, um, that hormone called oxygen, <gasps> right? No, not quite. Close, close, you're thinking of oxytocin. There are actually other factors like neurotransmitters and hormones that are involved too, like testosterone, estrogen, dopamine, serotonin. So in this episode, I'm gonna talk about the science behind falling in love. But before I do that, I wanna rewind and see if anyone has ever liked me or had a crush on me, specifically the people that I, I found very attractive. So I put together this quiz and then I sent it to all the people I've ever had a crush on. What the hell is even that? My yard. Wait, wait, wait. I, all of you. Daddy, chill. So in the name of love or science, I'm going to send them this crush quiz. So I gave this quiz out to 20 people. Uh, 19 replied. The one last person that didn't reply was my recent ex. So I get it. I totally get it. First question. Did you know that I liked you? Nope, nope, not until you told me. Who's Oh, yeah. You told me when you were drunk. Yeah. yeah. Not at the time, but I found out later. Yeah. I doubt that because I feel like I did a good job keeping it very secretive around you. Yeah. Alrighty, rate my attractiveness. One meaning ugly af and ten hella cute. I'm ready for my self-esteem to be lowered. Seven. Five. <laughs> That was my second boyfriend. <laughs> Eight, ten, ten, seven, nine, seven. I'll, I'll take the seven. Next up, rate my personality. One is trash, and ten is very cool. Six, eight, eight, nine, nine ten. ten. And lastly, did you ever like me? Yeah, yeah kinda, kinda. Bruh, if you're watching this, I had the biggest crush on you uh, my sophomore year. And if I had known that you kind of liked me, honestly, I would have went for it. You were the reason why I cried a lot. Nope. nope. Maybe if I wasn't straight. LOL. As a friend. Shut up. It's a yes or no question. Eh, not really. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, nope. I had a crush on her in fifth grade. A lot of guys had a crush on her. She is really, really pretty. She's a mother now. So liking and falling in love with someone can be broken down into three different stages. Sexual desire, attraction, and attachment. During each stage, your body will experience changes in specific hormones and neurotransmitters, which can affect your feelings, Whoa, thoughts, wow. and behavior. When you're in the stage of sexual desire or lust, you feel physically attracted and drawn to the object of your affection. Lust is driven primarily by an increase of testosterone in men and women and a decrease of estrogen in women. Next is attraction. During this stage, you become infatuated with the other person and you get excited just thinking about them. This stage involves the brain pathways that control the reward behavior which partly explains why the first few weeks or months of a relationship can be so exhilarating. The stage is characterized by an increase in dopamine, which motivates you to pursue a reward, and a decrease in serotonin, which can sometimes cause an obsession. Why are you so obsessed with me? Additionally, testosterone decreases in men and increases in women. Finally, the last stage is attachment. This increases with time in healthy relationships as attraction goes down. Over time, dopamine decreases and oxytocin, or the cuddle hormone, increases. By understanding the chemistry behind love, you can help develop more realistic expectations of your relationships. So this cuddle hormone, oxytocin, binds to this receptor and plays a huge role in bonding with other people. Interestingly, it's hypothesized that having a genetic mutation in this receptor can lead to dangerous behaviors like soft... 
On the other hand, clinical trials have reported that administering oxytocin to patients with traumatic stress-related disorders like major depressive disorders and PTSD does provide some therapeutic benefits. Uh, well, I hope you guys learned something today, and if you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. And if you love me, <laughs> then subscribe to this channel. Alright guys, thank you so much, and I hope to see you next time in lab.